Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis chapter 17. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, let's look at chapter 16, verse 16. Abraham was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bared Ishmael to Abram. Thirteen years of silence because of this sin being with Hagar. This is the second time that God did not speak to Abram because of a sin. First time he, he told Abram, he says, leave your family, leave, leave your city, go with you and your wife and your servants. He didn't. He took Lot. When Lot separated himself from, from Abram, God spoke to him. Now here he gets involved with, with his handmaid of Sarai. They get together and they have a child. This is not what God meant by having a child. Thirteen years. The Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. That's the first time that one shows up. Almighty God. Walk before me. You haven't been doing it. And be thou perfect. Again, that perfect doesn't mean 100% sinless. You do to the best of the ability that I've given you. You haven't. God's now telling, he's given Abram a chance to live his life and he's blown it. Now God has got to step in with commandments. God's got to step in and say, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You've been not doing it right. I will make a covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face. Now this is a good fall. He drops down to the ground. And God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Now that should be one nation. Should have been of Israel. But now you got Ishmael. And we know later on he's going he's gonna to meet uh, Keturah. He's going to marry her, and he's going to have children. That's not really what God had for Abram. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram. But thy name shall be Abraham. He's gone from high father to father of many nations. This is the first name change in the Bible. Now watch. 17.5, you are no longer Abram, you are Abraham from this point forth. 16.16, 16. and Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. Abraham is not the father of Ishmael. God said because of that sin, that 13 year silence, I have got to give you a new name. I cannot reference you with that son, Isaac, that will be born. You say, well, Abram and Abraham is the same man. No, it's not. not. Not now. It's been changed. Ishmael is of Abram. Now he gets the name Abraham. That's a very important move in the Bible. 1616 says Abram. Abram was four score and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram, Abram. 
that's important. So the fact is, if there's ever a quiz show or, or a trivia cards from the Bible, and they'll say, well, who is the, who is the father of Ishmael? And you answer the word Abraham, you're wrong. That's an important deal. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. Six million Jews, plus or minus, were killed in World War II. Just World War II. That's a lot of fruit from Abraham. There was a lot of Jews that survived World War II. But just from one period of time, six million of them were killed. And I will make nations of the Arabians, Ishmaelites, and then when we get to the children of Katrina, uh, Katrina, uh, Ketra. And kings, David, Solomon, Jesus Christ, shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting forever covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Who is this God? Verse 1. The Almighty God. That's the God you better have. The God of Abraham. The Almighty God. The God of the Hebrews. The God of the Arabians is Allah. They both begin with an A, but they don't not Almighty God. Everlasting coming to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee to thy seed after thee the land. Where he is. The land grant. The Jewish home. Not the Arabian home. Where thou art a stranger. All the land of Cana. For an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. Now look at 1612. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of. Of all his brethren. But he don't get the land grant. But he's going to be in that land. That's been granted to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God said unto Abraham. Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore thou and thy seed after thee. In their generations. This is my covenant. Which he shall keep. Between me and you. And thy seed after thee. Every male, every man child among you shall be circumcised. Here's the first time this shows up. And notice Ishmael has already been born. He's 13 years old now. He, though he will get circumcised at the end of this chapter, he has not done the Jewish law for circumcision. And he shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. Imagine God carrying this conversation on with a man. Won't you take that flesh and I want you to cut it. I want you to be a particular people. I want you to stand out. I want people to say, you know, in order to be that kind of person there, you've got to have a certain operation done to yourself. You mean they really do that? Yes, they do that. Why do they do that? Because God told them to do it. Now, this is not the day of morphine. This is not the day of, uh, of I can't think of the name, the anesthesiologists. I don't know what they would do for the pain, but this is painful. It shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and and you token what's a token it's a sign it's a thing that you can show when you go through the subway you got a token it's something that you can put into the machine that, that lets you pass the foreskin of a jewish man male is a token
you can you can say okay what birthright do you have of, of to be a Jew Abraham and you can show the man trying to be clean well see I don't have something no more he that is eight days old and the medical facts you can find about this one When my son was born, it was two or three days. You got to hurry up and the insurance company's got to get you out of the hospital. But when they say that that male child is eight days old, he is perfectly in his body. He is right to have that, that, that circumcision. It is a time that that child, that male child, I don't know about a female child, but it's a time for that male child that he will not have no pain at all. It has to do with blood and, and the, the, the temperament of the body. God knows about the body. He made the body. He said, I'm going to give that male child, when he created man, before he has set, we are 17 chapters and 12 verses from when God created man. And I will set forth the eighth day for a male child that when I call Abraham and I have Abraham do that circumcision, I am going to put in that male child eight days. He's going to be perfectly right to do circumcision. That is the foreknowledge of God already. And medical doctors today, they are wrong. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So, if a Gentile later on comes and says, listen, I want to be a apostolite. If that Ethiopian eunuch did join himself to the Jewish religion, he would have to do the circumcision to be right with God. And when Jesus comes to the Pharisees and all them, Circumcision is one of them great signs that look at it were of Abraham. And Paul will later on tell the church, listen, circumcision is nothing. You may have circumcised that part of your body, but you haven't circumcised your heart. See, there's no Calvary. There's no empty tomb right now. This is the mark that you're going to follow your father Abraham which is not going to father me. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought with thy money, servants, slaves, need be circumcised. Now, can you imagine Abraham going out and buying somebody and saying, Hey, yeah, you're going to be my servant. All right, master. And walking home, and he puts his arm around and says, Before we go home, we got to perform an operation. You, what you say, sir? We need an operation. Can I go back? <laughs> no. And remember, we're dealing with a medical age here. It's not like we have medical grace from God today. Must needs be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh. God made a covenant with Abram. He says, you build that ark, and I will give you that bow in the sky. And when I see that bow after the rainstorm, I'm going to remember the covenant that I made with you and those animals. And when I see a Hebrew of Abram, and he has the circumcision of his flesh, I'm going to see that you're going to stand out among all the people in the world. Now, today is not circumcision when God looks down from heaven. When God looks down from heaven, he sees either you're washed in the blood or you're lost and going to hell. When he looks down in Genesis 17, now, unto Calvary, he sees you've either been circumcised or you're uncircumcised. Either you're a Hebrew or you're a Gentile. Today, either you're saved, a Christian, a child of God, or you're unsaved, you're wicked, and you're a child of Satan. John 8, 44. Today it is the mark of Calvary. 
the shed blood of Jesus Christ. This, by the way, is also the shedding of blood. I would imagine it bleeds. I don't know. I've never seen it. And I can be wrong. But I'm assuming that there's blood. The uncircumcised man-child, not woman. I don't know where Islam gets off by circumcising women. That is totally against the Bible. Nowhere does God say circumcise a woman. Man, child. I guess they have a problem between male and female. They cannot. I'm trying to be clean. Whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised. That soul, the eternal being, shall be cut off. When you see cut off now on, and you're dealing with an Old Testament ways, before Calvary, when you see cut off, you are going to hell, and there's no way for you to get out. You cannot lay around and say, oh, I'm not going to get circumcised. And then come back later on and say, well, I'll get circumcised now. There are certain sins in the law that if you do them, there is no forgiveness. There is no mercy. You go to hell. And it's other than just adultery. False witness is one of them. And we'll see as we go through the... The Old Testament, when we go through the law, that there are many sins that people will be cut off for, and there's no hope. He has broken my covenant. Now, what would make you, I mean, an eight-year-old child, eight-day-old child is not going to say nothing. But, I mean, if you're a man and you got this responsibility, what's the one thing that will make you not serve God here? Fear of pain. Fear. What man today would, would, would not get right with God? You know, he fears that his life is going to be ruined if he trusts Jesus. Or he'll fear that if he has to preach the gospel, people will make fun of him. Fear is a thing that will just make you not do right. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, which means contentious, Thy wife, thy wife, not Hagar, Thy wife. That's twice Abraham's reminded that that woman there, that's your wife, Abram. She's not your sister. Thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. Now here's another second change of a name and becomes Sarah, which means princess. So you cannot relay Ishmael to, to Abraham and Sarah. This is after that child has been born. I have given these two people a new name. If they were under the doctrine of the church, they would have been born again and given a new name. They are, God has given them a second lease on life, saying, here is your new name, and this is stuff I'm telling you to do. You better do it. Forget about Abram. Forget about Sarai. That's done with. Go forth now as Abraham and Sarah, and obey me. And I will bless her, and give thee a son. Oh, so it's not Ishmael. And give thee a son also of her. Don't get Hagar in the picture. That was wrong. And don't you dare get another woman. Sarah. Yea, I will bless her, and she, about, she shall be a mother of nations. You say, well, what's the nations there? I mean, is it Isaac, then Jacob, then the twelve tribes? And yeah. And later on, who did they marry? Who does Solomon marry? Man, he marries every woman, strange woman he can find. Solomon does not provide a pure breed of Jewish people. And of all those women, one of them I know is an Egyptian. If he produces woman by her, that's not Jewish. 
Now those children will go out and make children and become nations. And kings of people shall be of her, the Lord Jesus Christ, David, Solomon. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. This is not a good fall. You say, well, wait a minute. In 16, Abraham was counted for righteousness. Okay, God's going to happen. I believe you. In chapter 16, he sinned. And he got out of the will of God. And when God tells him now, the same promise that he believed, he breaks out and laughing. What happened to that man that had the faith? And you know that this is wrong before God. And I'll show you in a couple seconds. And laughed. And said in his heart. Not verbally. Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old. He's on the verge of ninety and nine and a hundred. And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear. Alright now we know the age of Sarah. She's 10 years younger than Abraham. She is still barren. Paul says about the inside of her womb is dead. Shriveled up like a raisin. It's not going to do nothing. Dead womb. And he says this in his heart. He ain't dare going to speak to God about it. And here comes a bad prayer. Here comes a prayer that God's going to listen to and he's going to hear to 2017 A.D. And they become an enemy and he's described as a wild child. Be careful what you pray. What is it? I forget what king, who's, who's the father of Manasseh. Oh, Lord God, I love you. Don't you see everything I'm doing? And God says, I will add years. on. I told you you're going to die, but add years to your life. And he produces Manasseh, the longest reigning king in Judah. And yet he is the most wicked king. That even Jeremiah speaks that the, that the, <coughs> the sins of that one king is still going to be paid up by Nebuchadnezzar. Sometimes we be just let God handle. And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Now, Ishmael is a type of flesh. Oh, God, take care of Ishmael. Help him. Verse 17 is said in his heart. Verse 18, he speaks out loud. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear shall bear a son indeed besides your doubts, Abraham. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Isaac means laughter. Every time you call Isaac, I am going to remind you of having that little laughter in your heart, buddy. And what is Isaac? Isaac Galatians 6 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You're going to reap that laughing child for the rest of your life. How dare you laugh at me? You believed me at one time, and now you laugh. Call that child Isaac. This is the second person to be pre-named in the Bible. And it's because he laughed at God. Had he not laughed at God, said, okay, God, I believe you again. His name might not have been Isaac. And shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him, no Ishmael, for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed, Jacob, 12 tribes, after him, no Ishmael at all. When it comes to that covenant. And as for Ishmael... I have heard thee. Shouldn't have said it, but I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. I have not set no covenant with him. I have blessed him. And will make him fruitful. And will multiply him exceedingly. 
twelve princes, not tribes, shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year, nine months later. So they're at the end of the, they're at the end, near end of the year. Nine months will bring you into the next year. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. So God leaves. Abraham stops talking. And we see that it's not Ishmael, the promised child. We see Ishmael's not the one that God has his eyes on. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, it's his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bo bought with his money, including Eliezer, every male among the men of Abraham's house, no females, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskins in the same in the self same day as God had said unto He did everybody in one day. And the one that did the circumcise would have to have the circumcision done to him too. And Abraham was 90 years old and nine, 99 years old, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Ishmael, his son, son. Abraham is not called the son. Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old. And remember what 13 is. That's rebellion. And verse 12 said, the child would be eight days old. So it's not Ishmael. When he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son. And all the men of his house, born in the house, bought with the money of the stranger, were circumcised with, with him. Look at the obedience. Abraham, I want you to do this painful operation. As soon as God takes off, man, he gathers all the men together, and it's performed. And we're going to find out later that when they do this, man, there's a time of rest because of pain. Joshua does it, has to do it with the people. Um... Levi and Simeon makes a whole nation of people. And while they were in pain, they went and attacked the city. They used it out of deceit. 